Hey everyone, this is Adam from UAV Coach. Hope you all had a happy new year. Today, we're going to be answering some of your drone questions. We've gathered these from polls, comments on our posts, and our knowledge base. So let's dive in. I've tried some lights on my drone. Front lights are clear white strobes, a rear right green light, and a rear left red light. Are these light settings right? Those all sound correct. The main thing to consider is that your anti-collision lights are strobing and can be seen from at least three miles away. Common colors include red, green, and white. You alluded to it in a previous video. I'm an Australian REPL pilot, and I would like to apply for a 107. Can you talk more about this? To apply for a Part 107 certification as an Australian REPL pilot, or any foreign pilot for that matter, you'll need to follow these steps to ensure compliance with FAA regulations. To get a Part 107 certification, first, ensure your drone meets FAA Remote ID requirements and submit a Notice of Identification, or NOI, on the FAA's Drone Zone website, if it's registered outside the US. You will pay $5 per drone. You can take the FAA Part 107 exam as a foreign citizen if you can read, write, and understand English. We have an online test prep course for the exam, which you can check out below. For commercial work, apply for economic authority from the U.S. Department of Transportation, or DOT, including a foreign aircraft permit, which takes 15 to 30 days to process. Follow Part 107 rules, including flying within visual line of sight, staying below 400 feet, and using Lance for airspace authorization. Once these steps are complete, you'll be ready to fly commercially in the US. Can I fly my drone near railroad trains? Like for instance, if the drone is say 50 to 75 feet above the train or like 30 to 40 feet away. Trains are technically considered vehicles and under the FAA's part 107.145 rule, you are not allowed to fly a drone over moving vehicles. But what if the train is stationary? Well, drones are also not allowed to fly over critical infrastructures, and a subsection of critical infrastructures are passenger rails and freight trains. So we would suggest flying near them, but not directly over them. Can you fly in the US Forest Service without a permit and no state parks involved? The terms national park or state park and national forest are often confused, but it's important to clarify that they are not the same. Drones are prohibited in national parks, but according to the US Forest Service, there are generally no restrictions on flying drones in national forests. However, exceptions may apply, so it's essential to contact the local forestry office to confirm the area's designation and check for any specific restrictions. If restrictions exist, request them in a written, published format. To protect visitors in wilderness areas, the Forest Service has published tips for responsible drone use on national forest system lands outlining general rules and areas where drone operations are restricted. Remember, all drone pilots must comply with FAA regulations when flying anywhere in the US. Lastly, how is a sparsely populated area defined? Popular FAA regulations usually include this term sparsely populated, such as in part 107.25, where it states a drone cannot be operated from a moving vehicle unless it is flown over a sparsely populated area. So again, what does a sparsely populated area mean? Well, the FAA hasn't officially defined sparsely populated, but expects pilots to use good judgment, ensuring few people are present to reduce risks during an emergency landing. A past guideline suggested two people per acre or about two people in a football field sized area, though this isn't a legal standard. The FAA evaluates incidents based on the location population, and drone operation. So there are five popular questions we got asked by all of you. Let us know if there are any more and we might make a part two to this video. If you wanna find more commonly asked questions, check out our knowledge base linked below. Comment any further questions. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Until next time, blue skies and safe flying.